Hello, I'm Reverend Garth Schumacher, and you've come to the Congregational United Church of Christ of Amory, Wisconsin, and we're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, would you please pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you knowing that what you call us to be and what for us is sometimes at odds with what the world expects from us. Sometimes we feel on the edge between the world we live in and the world you call us to be a part of. Show us your way, O Holy One, that we may learn how to be about your ministry even as we live on the edge. Open our hearts to receive your word and your guidance for our lives. Amen. So this Sunday, <clears throat> the service itself will focus on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, probably one of the most favorite, uh, favorite and uh, famous passages in the Bible, and because you hear it so often at weddings. Uh, it's the love chapter of 1 Corinthians. Love is patient, and the greatest of these is love. So today, we're not going to do 1 Corinthians. We're actually going to do another selection from the lectionary, which is Jeremiah, the prophet in the Old Testament. And in this section of Jeremiah, the first chapter, he's describing his call to be a prophet in Israel. And this was just before the Babylonians conquered Israel and carted everybody off to Babylonian exile. And he was warning them all about this. And of course, nobody wants to be told that they're about to be defeated. But that's exactly what Jeremiah was doing. But in order to get himself credibility, he had to say, look, this is not me talking. This is God. So here's the passage we'll be using today. And I'll make a little commentary here and there throughout it. Now, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Now, I just want to stop right there at the very beginning. You've heard this passage many times. You see it on billboards. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And it's so often used by the people who are against abortion. And uh, it's put up there saying, see, God knew you before. And the question I have when I hear that passage is, number one, it's about Jeremiah. But number two, it's also saying, I knew you before you were in the womb. Consequently, I knew your spirit is what God is saying. So the question I have to ask is, are we human beings having a spiritual experience? Or are we spiritual beings having a human experience? experience. That will play into the conversation as well. So I'm going to start over again and keep going. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations, he's telling Jeremiah. Then I said, ah, oh, Lord, this is Jeremiah saying, ah, oh, Lord, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. <laughs> but then God comes back, said, don't say you're only a boy, for you shall go where I send you, and you will say exactly what I tell you to say. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. You see how that's going to give his message, Jeremiah's message, so much more import when they're God's words as a prophet. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Thus ends the reading of Jeremiah for this coming Sunday. Well, the stories that we've been telling about Jeremiah and the stories in Luke are stories that talk about how the Jesus and Jeremiah had to be prophetic within their communities, and they were condemned for it. Jesus was almost thrown off a cliff, and Jeremiah was threatened more than a few times by the people in power, especially. 
So this is something that we are told to be as ministers. And in the United Church of Christ, as you all know, we are all ministers. I happen to be ordained and go through the process, but we are all ministers in the United Church of Christ. And so we are called, just like Jeremiah and just like Jesus, we are called to speak truth to power. But also we're called for one other thing, and that is to speak our truth in love. Now that comes from Paul, the Apostle Paul. Yes, we're to speak the truth, speak the truth to power, and speak our truth in love, so that we may more powerfully commune with those in power and those that may even consider us an anathema to them. So it is a very powerful ask that God is placing upon us, just like God did with Jesus and Jeremiah. So then he goes on to talk about that we are here to make give sight to the blind, to bring good news to the poor, and to set those who are oppressed free. So I would like to say this. We are called to also set people free, the oppressed. We are here to gain sight, insight, enlightenment, so that we may better understand the difficulties that other people are having, so we can share the good news with them of God's love and share our own love with them. So in order to do that, we have to admit to ourselves first, taking the plank out of our own eye, in what ways are we poor? In what ways are we oppressed? In what ways are we blind? Because if you don't think you are any of those three, rest assured there is part of your life which you are blind or poor or oppressed and think about it. And then I want you to do something. I want you to have a silent prayer and saying, God, please help me in my poverty. Please help me in my blindness. Please help me in my oppression. In other words, making yourself open to God's help and God's love. And this form of vulnerability will bring the love in for your own personal salvation. Hence, being able to take the splinter out of another's eye. Would you please pray with me? Lord, we thank you for this word from you that has spoken so directly into our lives today. It's true that sometimes we feel very alone and trapped in difficult situations of life. We don't always know what to do, what step to take, and what to say or where to turn. We've tried to give the problem to you, but in some way we've continued to carry part of the load by ourselves, and it is starting to break us. Right now, at this very moment, we are throwing the full weight of our burden and cares on your huge shoulders. We thank you for taking this burden from us and for filling us with the strength we need to press through this time in our lives. In the name of Christ, amen. I hope and pray for yours and all of our salvation in Christ. Go in peace, amen.